All right, so real quick, I'm going to talk about my current situation. So, boards I'm going to be completely transparent with y'all. I'm not making a lot of money right now. I'm making around $400 a month because I'm making around $100 a week. I am an inventory manager for my dad's business. I have really flexible hours. I tend to work around two hours a day on that. Come inside and then just like the rest of the day, I'm either doing school, I'm working out, or I'm working on my business. So, it's like what I'm doing, how much money I'm making monthly. My plans for this business, obviously, like my plans is to grow this YouTube channel and you grow a following, but I don't really see myself as a YouTuber. I really do see myself as an entrepreneur. So like, if you were to ask me like, are you a YouTuber? Technically, yes, I am. But really my main goal is to build an audience here so that I have people to sell to, so that I have people who like listening to my message and also just to help people, just to be completely honest, bro, I like doing this. And I've always like, since I was 10, 11 years old, I've been trying to be a YouTuber. So I think it's just made for me, my boy. So anyway, now let's get into the video and talk about what most teens do with their money. So this is what I used to do with my money. So basically, I would just work in odd and ends jobs. Bro, I always like fumble when I say that. Odd and ends jobs. So like if someone needed the car wash, I'll wash the car. I'd be like, hey, would you would you pay me if I wash the car? Or like if I cut someone's grass, I might get some money here. And, you know, I would get money here and there and I get money on my birthday or whatever. So it's kind of just like it was random. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't planned. It wasn't monthly. I don't have an allowance. It's just like whenever I did work, sometimes I would get paid. Sometimes I wouldn't. But every time I did get paid, I would come home and put it all in a Ziploc bag. I have it right here. I'll pull it out. It's empty right now because I no longer do it. I just put it all in the Ziploc bag and it would all get piled in there into one big wad of cash, right? bunch of ones, bunch of fives, tens, twenties, you know, anything. It was just all in one big clump. It wasn't organized. So that caused a little bit of a problem. So like the pros and cons of just having money like that is it was free. I had freedom to kind of spend it on whatever I wanted. So like, say I woke up one morning, went to my favorite clothing, online clothing store or whatever. And I said, oh, summer drop. And I was looking like, oh, okay. I want these new beach shorts or whatever. And I'd say, okay, I want them. I'd say, oh, do I have enough money? Be like, yep. Do I justify this purchase? As in like, okay, do these shorts look like they're as valuable as the store is selling them for? I'd be like, okay, yep, it is. Then I'd buy them. Like there was no budget. There was no organization saying, oh, okay, you don't have enough money for this because you need, you need to save for this. It's like, I kind of knew in the back of my mind that I need to be saving for, car, for a car, but it wasn't like set in stone. You know, there wasn't any outside external force kind of holding me accountable. Like, oh, bro, you can't take it out of the car budget or whatever. Because it was just in one big wad, you know? The budget was just what I kind of said it was in my head. And so I carried on like this for basically most of my life until recently, until I started taking a Dave Ramsey class for business or not really businesses because he's not really teaching anything business wise in this online course, but he's talking about just like managing your money as like an early young adult, whatever. And my mom thought it would be kind of good for me to take it for school. And you know, a lot, Dave Ramsey gets a little bit of flack in like the space of self-improvement or kind of like just the space of business. And because he talks a lot about saving and he talks a lot about saving your way to a millionaire or just saving money in general. And a lot of guys, like especially guys like myself and you know, a lot of the big, more popular dudes is they adamantly adamantly speak against this because who wants to like spend their best years of their life poor and then eventually get to live their life when they're 60 years old like the best years of your life are gone bro and you're 60 years old and now you can finally live your life like that's just not cool to me so you have to work your butt off and then you know you get to reap the rewards at a young age as well anyway i started taking this class and he started talking about it and some things that i agree with and some things that i don't but you know he, he's giving me a lot of insight just on like the basic things that everybody has to learn when it comes to like managing your money and stuff like that and so but something that kind of stood out to me it really didn't i guess it stood out to me but it was just kind of like oh you know that would be a good idea kind of thing is the envelope method now you may or may not have heard about it. it's pretty common like your mom probably used to do it but it's called like the envelope method. So basically you take as many envelopes as you want. I think I took five and I write down different budgets that I want to have on each envelope. So one would be car savings for me. Another one was food. Another one was clothing. Another one was giving. And another one was books. I think, I think it was books. I think I might've made that lit one later though. I don't think that was like an original one, but anyway, so I made that and I put, I divided my money into all of these little envelopes. Like I said, I didn't have, a, I still don't have a lot of money to my name. And so I don't even have a bank account. That's why I'm doing this. And so if you don't have a bank account, this is what you need to do, right? 
<clears throat> you put each money in each envelope, divide it how you want to. I put most of my money in car savings, put some money into food, put a little bit of money into books, and put a little bit of money into clothing. I did that, and I kind of, you know, I, I chilled with that, I chilled with that for a little bit while, you know, everything in these bunch of different envelopes. And then I found kind of like the ultimate way, the best way to go about this, and this is how I do it now, is I only have two envelopes. So I have the car savings envelope, and then I have just my investment and spending envelope. And obviously, like, you might have a car already. And so you might not need a car envelope anymore. But say, okay, say you do want a car. And say you also want a laptop. And you also want to buy your own, own phone. So you have three big purchases. And then you have just your regular spending investment money. Okay? So what you would do is every time you get a paycheck... Anytime you get a paycheck, so that could be cutting grass, that could be just birthday money, that could be, you know, your weekly monthly income, is you split it up quarterly. One quarter of your money goes to your spending and investment, one quarter goes to phone, one quarter goes to laptop budget, and one quarter goes to car savings. And then this way, you continue to every week add a little bit of money, add a little bit of money. For me, like, obviously, I do want to get my own laptop at some point, And obviously, like, I do have other things that I need to get eventually. But the main thing that I'm rushing to get is a car. Like I want to get a car. I want to be able to drive to the gym and have all that and it be mine. Like I want to own everything. And so it needs to be mine. And then I also need to uh, have investment and spending money just for anything in general that I need to get for this business. Or just say I wake up one morning and say, you know, I want to, I'm going on vacation. I want a new shirt to go on the beach and I need to have money for that. So this makes it a lot easier where everything in the investment envelope or the spending envelope can't be spent or invested on anything that I want. Like it could be random. Like say I wake up or say I'm out of town or whatever and I want to get to beef jerky. Okay. Say I go to the gas station. I want some beef jerky. I can use the money in my spending slash investment envelope on that beef jerky, but I can't touch anything in the car envelope. Everything that's in the car envelope is completely and utterly untouchable unless I'm using it on my car. So that's the ultimate way to use the envelope method is don't make all these like little random envelopes for food and you know for this it just gets confusing and it's kind of like it's they it's more organized in a sense but it's just not optimally organized you know what i'm saying last but not least i'll talk about in this video is you know talk a little bit about investing so what do i invest in what do i see as a good investment so i made a video on this it got like zero views because i don't think people really care about this it's just investing in your education and i don't mean education like school work and stuff like that like i mean investing in your like business education, your self-improvement education and stuff like that. Like buy business books, bro. Like I like just over here I have the four hour work week. I have Think and Grow Rich. I have, you know, 48 Laws of Power. I have um the million millionaire fast lane. Like I just bought like fifty dollars worth of books. I spent all of the money that was in my investment envelope on books. I I hadn't really preach about like investing in your education. Because there's no higher ROI on that. Like, if you invest in your education, that's the highest ROI that you will ever get in your lifetime. Because if you invest in a $10 book, that $10 book is going to multiply over like the course of your lifetime because of the knowledge you took from it. And so that that $10 book will make you like over thousands and thousands of dollars later down the road because of the knowledge. And so like and that's one thing to invest in. That's not the only thing. Like invest in good clothing. Like investing in good clothing not only will it make you feel better about yourself, but other people will feel better about you. So you're gonna get more positive interactions. Invest in like some cologne. Like I have some Versace colognes. I have some Nautica uh two Versaces, one Nautica and like Versace, you might think, oh, Versace is going to be, Versace is not that expensive. Just get like two good colognes. I have Versace Eros and Versace Dylan Blue. If you want to smell them, you don't want, want to pick them out. Um, but yeah, invest in clothes, invest in good like colognes, invest in your like education, like in books and stuff like that. And sometimes just invest in yourself to have a little bit of fun, my boy. Like don't take life too, too serious. Like I, I do preach about like taking life seriously and don't like mess about and stuff like that. But have some fun, man. Like invest, you know, have some fun. And whatever that means to you, you know what I'm saying? How much money should you invest? Like invest however much you need to get what you want to get. So like for me, this camera was 400, almost $500, but it's so much better, bro. Like it's, I, like I cannot put a price on how much this camera has helped me in making these videos just like go smoother and like look better. Like this camera is invaluable and it wasn't like in theory, like it's not even a expensive camera, but to me like 500, 400 something dollars is that's a chunk of change for me, especially right now. You know, one day I look back and it's just going to be pennies, but right now that's a lot of money. Um, this microphone was another good investment for me. Like it was, it was like 
the stand and the microphone itself cost me over like two hundred dollars i think like these are good investments so like if it's if you can justify the purchase like if you can say this camera's gun it's an investment because it's going to provide me value or it's going to give me money then don't hold back on spending the money right that's like clothes like obviously like some clothes are just too overpriced especially for you right now when you get to a point to where you're just like rich like clothing is really just cheap like you can buy like 400 dollars just regular t-shirts and nobody's going to notice but you you know you feel the quality and but like right now like <clears throat> investing in a 400 dollars shirt is not worth it spend that 400 dollars on literally multiple outfits but yeah like there's really no cap onto how much you should invest in it just kind of depends on what you're trying to invest in and if you can like mentally justify the purchase and be real be real with yourself like don't say oh yeah i justify this purchase when like clearly that camera costs like eight hundred dollars and you only had like seven if you only had like nine hundred dollars to your name do you really need that eight hundred dollar camera or could you could you settle for a cheaper camera a used camera and still kind of get the same stuff out of it you know what i'm saying you got to justify it but there's really no cap to how much you should invest. So yeah, that's all I'm going to talk about in this video. If you like this style of content for me, let me know down in the comments. Sign up to my email list. I know I haven't been preaching it a lot lately, but I've been putting out a lot more content. I've basically been posting daily there, giving a lot of good insight, really quick insights that maybe I can't make a full video on and that I can give you to you like real quick that actually like help me a lot. So yeah, my boy, keep improving your life. Never stop. My name's Charlie Cotton. I'm a homeschooled athlete and entrepreneur on self-improvement. You have a good night, my man. My man. <laughs>